Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lauren if you're new here and if you're not new, you're my best friend. Thank you. Today we're just doing a good old ranking video. I've never done one of these on my channel but I wanted to because I have so many eyeshadow palettes. If you've seen any of my declutters, I'll link one here in case you haven't, uh, it's pretty epic. I have a huge collection of eyeshadow palettes. It's that one thing that I have to have all of them. <laughs> like I can't just stop at one. So I have rather large collections of, you know, certain brands. In this case, we are talking about Natasha Denona because I talk a lot about Natasha Denona on this channel. And uh, I thought I would rank all the palettes that I had of hers. Oh, okay, I have this many. Okay, how many do I have? I also included the two face palettes she has, which are a hybrid of eyeshadows and there's like a blush and a highlighter. And I went back and forth about whether or not to include those in this ranking and I ended up including them. So just want to warn you. Now let's see, how many palettes do I have here? 18. I have 18 of her palettes. Now she has three sizes of eyeshadow palettes. Again, this is kind of excluding those face palettes that I have in here, but she's got a small, midi, and large. Now the small ones are normally, I think they're like five pans. I don't know where mine are. <laughs> I looked everywhere and uh, if I remember correctly, I think one of them broke. So I put them in a safe spot. I don't know where that spot is. Um, so those aren't included in here. So I'm just taking a look at my midi and my large palettes. Now the midi palettes retail, for $69. So when I say midi, I still mean expensive. The large palettes, yeah, those are gonna set you back about $129. I lied. I am actually working with 20 palettes here. I forgot about these monsters, which I, they don't fall into either of the categories. These are, these are like the XL palettes, okay? And they're like, almost $200, I want to say. Oh, ridiculous, ridiculous. Now I have to reorganize my ranking. Hold on, please. Okay, they, they're they kind of in there. I <laughs> managed to fit one. Um, <laughs> and the other one, I just have a general idea of where I want to put it. So oh. anyways, let's just get into this. So now there's 20 palettes that we're ranking, which is a decent amount of palettes, if I do say so myself. And uh, I'm just going to start at the bottom, at the ones that I genuinely don't like very much so let's just let's just get into this this is just something fun to do on a rainy saturday you're not going to see this until sunday maybe on a saturday i don't know when i'm posting this but it's raining outside i felt like this was the perfect day to put on some very bright red lipstick which is actually also natasha denona um and just yeah yeah have a good old-fashioned ranking okay Starting with number 20, we have the Natasha Denona Safari palette. Now this is the only all matte palette that she's put out and that's kind of reason enough to hate it. Um, also her mattes are not great. I love a lot of what she puts out. Not all of her mattes are bad, but I just felt like this palette was tricky to work with. Like the mattes tended to come out a little more patchy than most of her other mattes. And I just got bored. I never reach for this palette. I never think of this palette. When I do, I'm just like, oh, I still have that palette. Um, because it's kind of a bummer. And for the price tag, <laughs> oh, I should love it, right? I should, but I just don't. So for me, you might see this one in a upcoming Love It or Lose It because I, I just need to try it one more time before I declutter it. I have never decluttered a Natasha Denona palette. And I don't know if I want to start now, but at number 20, maybe it's time for this guy to go. Number 19. So when I decided I wanted to do a ranking, I brought out some of the palettes that I wasn't sure where I was going to put them. And I've been using them a lot more and trying to decide, do I love it? Do I not love it? What's the deal? Well, <laughs> number 19, we have the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette. Now, this is one of her large palettes. It's $129 and it looks beautiful, right? I hate this palette. Every time I use this palette, I am disappointed by the look. I don't know if it's because it's just an overly bright palette and there's not enough mattes for me to really kind of do what I prefer doing. 
I don't know what it is. I don't think it's just that because when I try to use some of these colors, they come out rather patchy. Again, we're talking about the mattes here. The mattes are not great. The shimmers are beautiful. They are, but the mattes are so disappointing. This purple magic, I literally was doing my makeup. I was getting ready for work and I had to take it all off. I very rarely have to do that. I normally can fix my eyeshadow if I don't like it. This one I couldn't fix. It was so patchy. It looked so bad. This is just disappointing because I wanted it to be amazing. It looks like it should be amazing. And while the shimmers are good, the mattes are so disappointing and the overall color story is so hard to work with that I just don't reach for this one very often. Coming in at number 18, we have the Tropic Palette. I think this palette has a pretty well-known reputation for just not being super great. It's not her best formula. My palette is pretty old too, so that doesn't help, but it's the shimmers aren't great in this. Normally her shimmers are what kind of makes the palette. In this case, it was just kind of uh, uh, not very impressive. Again, this is one of her larger palettes. So for $129, you want all the colors to work really well. And this was just kind of a failure. This green exotic just wasn't very good. I just couldn't get it to look like that on my eyes. It just came out a lot lighter. So a little bit of a disappointing palette. Not as disappointing as the Circle Loco palette because that one looks so pretty and it's so disappointing. But at 18, we gotta do the Tropic palette. 17, hmm. This one, I went back and forth on where to place it. And that is the Zendo palette. Now, the Zendo palette, it has an interesting color story. It's not bad, but I just find it to be a little bit uninspiring. So I never reach for it. And actually this one performs really well. I have to say that her midi palettes, I think are the best in terms of her formula and her formula. Her formula in the midi palettes is always spot on. So the formula in this is good, but the color story is just one that I don't find myself reaching for very often. And you'd think with the amount of colors, like there'd be something in here, but I just, I just, it's, I pull it out and I'm kind of like, oh, 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 oh. so that is why we have the Zendo palette at number 17. At number 16, we have the Sunrise palette, another one of her midi palettes. And this one's good, but I just don't reach for it as much as some of the other palettes. Again, the formula is really great because it's a midi palette, so that formula is on point. But I just don't find myself very inspired when I reach for this, which is weird because I do like using warm tones on my eyes. This one, it just, I don't know. It's just kind of, eh. Whenever I reach for a Natasha Denona palette, it's often not this one. I have been trying to, you know, pick it out a little bit more. And I think the formula is starting to fail a little bit on me. Um, with Natasha Denona, I have noticed the older palettes, the formula is not quite the same. So it's, um, yeah, it's pretty and it's not a bad palette. It's just not one that I find very inspiring anymore. At 15, we have one of the mega palettes. Now this palette, uh, it has a very uninspiring name. It's something like the purple blue palette or something like that. Now I would have thought I would have loved this palette, but I don't for the price tag. I think when you are dealing with palettes that are this expensive, again, I think this one is almost $200. I didn't spend that much on it. I got it on sale during a Black Friday deal. But when you're dealing with a palette that's that expensive, you really expect every single color to perform amazingly. And I just felt like some of the colors weren't very pigmented. Like they were really pretty in the pan and I just couldn't get that color payoff on my eyes. Not all of them, but enough for that it was frustrating to work with. This silver though, that silver, it's very nice silver. It's, it's an awesome silver. And while this palette has a lot of potential, it's great if you wanna do a neutral look because the neutral shimmers are actually uh, fantastic, but it's just the purples and the greens were just kind of like meh. Like I know she can do better. So that's why this one was a little bit disappointing. Now I just did a video on this one and uh, decided that I liked it more than I thought I did. And that is the Love Palette. So it's not a bad palette. For me, the reason why this ranks a little bit lower is because it's not a color story that I personally love. So the colors perform so, so well. I discovered that some of these colors were just this pure love color, so pretty. 
and a lot of them were just they, they were very pretty but again it's I don't typically reach for very pink color stories so that's why this one is a little lower. I was surprised when I brought it out for my Battle of the Palettes Valentine's Day edition that I liked it a lot more than I remembered liking it. So it is a palette that I will continue to use. It still has a place in my collection, but it's just not one where I seek out that color story very often. Number 13, we have one of the face palettes and this is the Glam face palette. So this is the first one that she came out with and it looks like this and it's very neutral. It's very boring and I don't like the blush. <laughs> so I always say when you're dealing with an expensive palette that's a little bit on the smaller side, you really need to love everything in it in order to really get your money's worth. And I just don't love that blush. The highlighter is fine. It's not my favorite highlighter, but it's not bad by any, by any means. All the eyeshadows are great, but it's just a very neutral palette. And I think it's great if you again like every single thing in this palette but again for me that cream blush kind of knocks it down the list a little bit now i have traveled with this before because i do really like the eyeshadows and it's very travel friendly um and i um yeah and it's fine it's just like, not very exciting right it's just kind of like good for every day good if you don't want to put a whole lot of energy into your look i think you know Sometimes you just want to slap something on and go out the door. With bright colors, sometimes you have to work at it a little bit harder, right? Is it just me? Maybe that's just me, <laughs> but it's just a little bit boring, but that's okay. She has a place in my collection as well. Number 12 is actually what I have on my eyes today. I pulled it out because I wanted a refresher as to how I felt about this palette, and that's the Sunset palette. And this is one of her older palettes. It's kind of one of the ones that really made people fall in love with her. And it looks like this and it's not a bad palette i actually do really enjoy this palette i love the look that i pulled together today but the mattes again are not my favorite in this palette the shimmers are really what make it um they they are beautiful the shimmers perform so so well and you can do so many great more neutral leaning looks with this palette so i really do enjoy it but i do have to struggle a little bit with the mattes sometimes they get a little bit patchy so that's why it's not higher. It's a palette I really enjoy using, but it just sometimes mm, I have to work a little harder with the mattes and I don't always love having to do that. So that's the sunset palette. Number 11 is another one of her large palettes. I, I just have realized that maybe her large palettes are not for me because spending $129 on one palette is a too much money. It's too much money, okay? It is, it is. But we're talking about the Trio Chrome palette. And what was special about this palette when she came out with it is that the three colors in the middle are multi-chromes. Now, I actually really like this palette in terms of the way all the shadows perform. I think even the mattes are really creamy and they're really beautiful. But the reason why it is not rated higher is because there are so many better multi-chromes out there. Like some of these indie brands are just blowing multi-chromes out of the water. So while these are decent, they're not amazing. Like that multi-chrome shift that you're often looking for, it's much harder to catch in these. So it's just, it's just not as impressive. And some of these colors are colors that I just typically don't reach for. I'm not a big yellow fan. We've got a couple yellows in there. Um, but I actually was really impressed with how the purples work. I think the purple mattes are absolutely gorgeous. So I'll look, every once in a while, I'll do kind of a purple eye with that purple, multi-chrome kind of in the middle of it so more halo looking eye and i always really like that so i do like how this shadow performs um but i just know there's better multi-chromes out there so that's why it's not rated higher so those were the first 10 now we're moving on to the top 10 of my natasha denona palettes so in number 10 we have the natasha denona gold palette this is another one that really i think got people really interested in her brand because it's such a good palette and it's such an interesting color story. Like you have some pops, you've got this like blue, which is a really interesting cream texture. And then you have like this teal, which is absolutely beautiful. It's got a darker base to it, but then you have enough neutrals to do something more neutral if you want. Everything in this palette, it just performs so well. It's always nice to use this palette because I never have to worry about anything. <laughs> it's, it's so easy. I love that in a palette. Now it's not as bright as some other palettes, 
so that's why it's not higher but it is a beautiful palette it works really well it is kind of a classic and it is really dirty because i've been using it lately so <laughs> ignore that but this is number 10. Number nine, we have the other face palette and this is the Love Face palette. And I actually just did a review really recently, like two weeks ago on this palette. So if you are interested, definitely check that out. Now I have to be careful because my highlighter did come a little bit smashed. I have the replacement, I just haven't opened it up yet. Um, but this is the Love Face palette. So you're gonna have five eyeshadows. You have the cream blush, you have the highlighter, and I actually have the blush and the highlighter on my face today. And it's so beautiful. Like, I just prefer this one so much more than the Lamb Face palette. This one is so good, and I don't even reach for pink on a day-to-day -day basis, but even these eyeshadows, Aiko, this one here, the plummy color, it's so beautiful. This is a great example of her formula at its peak. And I just, the blush worked really, really well for me. And I just really like that highlighter. So I was really happy to have this, use it, and just be surprised by how much I loved it. Number eight, we have the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. Now I was kind of surprised by how much I love this palette, which I shouldn't have been because this is totally my color story. I love purples. I love purples. I think when I first got this palette, I was a little taken aback. So I'm like, is it too pink for what I normally like? It's not. It is the perfect mix of pink and purples. It is just a really fun, beautiful palette. And again, it's one of those ones where you can go more neutral or you can jazz it up with a little bit of color. Whatever look you're looking for, you can do it in this palette. And these are just colors that I personally really like. So again, you have another palette where the formula is just perfect in every single color. And it's a color store I love, which is why it's rated so highly. Number seven, this is the newest palette in my collection. I was lucky enough to find someone that wanted to trade me. I got an extra dream palette in my Beautylish Lucky Box and they got an extra retro glam. So we were able to just exchange palettes. It was perfect. I originally wasn't going to pick this up, which is kind of shocking because when you see the color store, you're like, the greens, Lauren, you love the greens. And while I do normally like a more vibrant green, I've been playing with this quite a bit lately and really fallen in love with it. These minty greens are so pretty. And again, the formula is just so on point in this palette. I have had fun every time I have used this palette. I don't even think I've reached for this pink flare. I just, I just don't because the greens just make me so happy. So I was so happy to discover that I actually really enjoyed using this palette. I had seen a bunch of reviews saying, oh, the greens are too similar. And you know, people aren't wrong. You know, those minty greens are very, very similar, but I think they're different enough where that I can create a different look with them if I want or not, you know? what I can do whatever I want with this palette. I like it, I like it a lot. Number six, we have the other very large eyeshadow palette. Now this is the green brown palette. And this one I just thought worked a lot better than the purple blue palette. <laughs> These names are not great of those two palettes. I wish they were better, but I just thought the colors in this one worked a lot better. They were more pigmented. Uh, it could be because this is slightly newer in my collection than the other one. The other one, the formula might just be breaking down a little bit, but it just, the greens make me happy. So yeah, I really enjoy using them. That's it. Is it worth the almost $200 price tag? No, no, no. But I also didn't pay that. Again, I got this for kind of a steal during one of the Black Friday sales. So it's kind of worth it, kind of worth it. Okay, now we're into the top five. And this one shouldn't surprise you. I was so excited when I saw this one for 50% off. And this is the Lila palette. And I have only used it a handful of times, to be honest. I normally go for this color and just kind of smear that all over my lids. So I probably shouldn't rank it as high as I do, but this is my color story. I absolutely love purples. It's a beautiful color story and all the colors that I've used perform really, really well. The fact that it was half off made me feel like I got away with highway robbery. That was very exciting to me. So it's a beautiful purple palette. It's just fun. I don't think they sell this one anymore, but I do wish you would come out with more purples because when she wants to make them good, she makes them so, so good. Number four, this is one of Natasha Denona's newer palettes and this is the My Dream palette. And this one is so good. Like I'm kind of shocked by how much I love this one. 
Now, I will say there are a couple disappointing colors in here. The darker purples, Edgy and Instinct, never come out as dark on my lids as they look in the pan, but I'm willing to overlook that because I'm obsessed with this multi-chrome. This color vision is, again, it's not even the best multi-chrome I own. These indie brands are just killing it in that game, but I just love this color. Normally, I will just slap it all over my eye and uh, call it a day. And that's it. That's how I go out because I love it so much. There was a couple weeks where just over and over I was reaching for it again. I would do a look, decide it was missing something, plop this in the middle of my eye and just realize it was perfection. This color alone has skyrocketed this palette to number four on the list. So yeah, I do quite, quite enjoy this palette. Number three, we have the bronze palette. Now you might say this like some of her other palettes and it might she does like a good neutral palette uh but this is a fantastic neutral palette now i would say mm, it is neutral but it's a warm neutral right it's a warm neutral and all of the colors are just it, they look like liquid gold on your lid it's just it's a fantastic palette this is actually another one that i really enjoy traveling with because if i'm not sure what i want to do for a look I can just plop any of these colors on my eyelid and it and it just looks good. It's not something that you have to work at to make to make it look good. It already looks good. So I really, really enjoy this palette. I love, I love, love this palette. I talk about it quite a bit because it's just, I think she just hit it out of the park with this one. Number two, this is kind of the complete opposite color story. We went from a very warm palette to a very cool palette. And this is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Now, it is a cool, cool palette. It is. And I love everything about it. Now, I normally like a warm eyeshadow. I think it really helps to bring out the color in my eye. That was until I met this palette. And then I realized my soulmate was a cool toned eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona. It's another palette where every single color looks good by itself or in tandem with any of the other colors in the palette. It just performs beautifully. Again, it's not a palette that you have to work at to make look good. It just makes you look good. I like, I don't even know how to describe my love for this palette, but it's one of those palettes that I'll reach for when I'm feeling overwhelmed by choices and I just want to look good for the day. I will reach for this. I especially like using this palette when I'm doing like a, a brighter colored lip because I think it just helps offset that lip and really bring out the color. I'm definitely more of a cool tone person and I don't think I realized that eyeshadow wise until getting this palette and then realizing, yeah, I, I really like cool toned eyeshadow. Number one. Now this probably won't be a surprise if you've watched any of my declutters that include Natasha Denona palettes. Not that I've gotten rid of any of them, but I do show them. But my favorite Natasha Denona palette of all times is the Metropolis palette. This is another one I don't know if it's available anymore, uh, but it should always be available forever and ever because it is the most unique and interesting palette. One of the most unique and interesting palettes that I own. And I say that because the majority of these eyeshadows are different formulas. Some are more creamy, some are more powdery, some are almost gel-like in consistency. It's always kind of a mixed bag as to what you're gonna get with the eyeshadow. And uh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I realized that I had to play with this quite a bit before becoming comfortable using it. It is a little bit of a darker palette. I do tend to like brighter, lighter palettes, but this one will always be my favorite from Natasha Denona. It's just, a fun palette and the greens that she has in here, those olive greens, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's just every single color in this palette I use and I love and I'm always just surprised by. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if you should be surprised by your eyeshadow, but I'm always surprised by how just great the look turns out and how happy I am with it and how creative I can really be with this palette. I feel like this palette tested my limits a little bit especially with the different consistency in the eyeshadow formulas. And that's fun. Sometimes it's fun to be tested. Now that does mean that this isn't always the palette that I want to reach for, but it is the palette I think of when I think, hey, what's my favorite Natasha Denona palette? Metropolis. It's just fantastic. 
it makes me happy. It makes me a better makeup artist and um, I just love it. Whew! So that was all 20 of my Natasha Denona palette, midi, large, and face palettes. Uh, there was a lot, <laughs> there was a lot. I just, I really do like Natasha Denona's formula for the most part, but I think now that I've done this ranking, you're probably gonna see a few of these palettes go in the declutter. Those bottom two, those, why is the circle logo so frustrating? It shouldn't be that frustrating. This is why it's ranked on the bottom. It deserves to be there. I would love to hear your opinion on this ranking. Let me know if you have a different opinion on any of these palettes, because I would love to hear that. Uh, because that's the beautiful thing about makeup. You can have a different opinion. Yeah, you should. I don't think you're gonna find two people that have the exact same opinion on makeup. And that's what I love about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, I will be doing more rankings in the future. I'm working on my ColourPop ranking, but I have so many ColourPop palettes. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. So it's coming, it's coming slowly. Not for a while, but it's coming. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.